In the early 20th century, Max Planck, who was a Nobel Prize winner, a physicist, and a very well-renowned scientist of the early 20th century, he went about touring Germany and gave lectures on quantum mechanics. Now, the interesting thing is that during his tours, he used the same driver who drove him around the country, and a lot of times this driver also attended his lectures in the lecture halls. After attending hundreds of these lectures with Max Planck and driving him around to different lecture halls, the driver told Max Planck and claimed that by now he could deliver these lectures as well as Max Planck could, and he had basically memorized all the lectures. So Max Planck took him on the offer and suggested that in the next speaking engagement, instead of me, you go ahead and deliver the lecture on quantum mechanics. At the next lecture, the driver went ahead, took the stage, and delivered the lecture. And as expected, he had memorized the entire lecture which Max Planck typically gives, and to his delight, there was a lot of applause from the audience. They all loved what we had to say. But then came the time for questions and answers. Despite having attended hundreds of these lectures and literally memorizing the entire lecture and delivering it perfectly, the driver was not able to comprehend the questions that were coming his way. And that demonstrates a very crucial principle in learning. There is a learning or the level of understanding that Max Planck had, and there is a learning and level of understanding that the driver had. So what is the purpose of this story? This story demonstrates a clear difference between surface level, high level, superficial level of understanding and a deep, in-depth level of understanding of the topic at hand, which obviously Max Planck had. And how does it relate to your FE electrical and computer and P power exam preparation? It's pretty simple. If you want to do well on this exam and leading up to the exam day, if you want to make your exam preparation more interesting and would like to retain the knowledge and be able to apply it in your job or as general part of your electrical engineering knowledge base, then it is very, very important to try as much as you can to develop that deep level of understanding, okay? The Max Planck type level of understanding. Now, the idea is not that you're trying to become a physicist or a scientist or a Nobel laureate, but avoid the temptation to just skim at the surface, memorize things, with expectation of being able to spit it out on the exam. That's not the case. You have to be able to field the questions and that only comes when you have a deep level of understanding. The next logical question is how to develop this deep level of understanding. In this video, we are going to introduce a very simple but extremely powerful method of testing your level of understanding, which is called the Feynman technique. Before we jump into the Feynman technique, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Who was Richard Feynman? Richard Feynman was a physicist and a scientist, and he was not an ordinary physicist or scientist. He was a Nobel Prize winning physicist and he contributed immensely to the field of quantum electrodynamics and came up with the Feynman diagrams. But in this day and age, he's mostly remembered for a very different reason. And that reason is the Feynman technique. Richard Feynman was nicknamed as the great explainer because of his ability to explain extremely complicated concepts and topics in very simple to understand language. And he was able to transmit the knowledge very effectively. Going through school as well, you might have come across different categories of professors. There are professors who are super smart, but they are very bad at explaining things. At the other hand, they are equally smart professors who are not only very good at their research or their topic or their discipline, but they have this unique ability to explain concepts effectively as well. And that is the whole idea behind the Feynman technique. The idea is that it is not good enough to be able to explain a complicated concept to somebody who already has a lot of knowledge or has an understanding of prerequisites or try and use complicated definitions to make it even more complicated. The idea is that you distill the concept down to simple enough explanation where anyone and everyone can understand it. 
And the prerequisite, the only prerequisite to that is that you yourself have to have a very sound understanding. Now you might have applied this during your college days as well, where in group study sessions, there you or one of your friends would basically stand up and go ahead and explain the concepts. And you would be surprised, a lot of times, students find that getting an explanation or learning something from other students is actually much better than uh, the explanation that is provided in the class uh, by the professor. And the whole idea is that that student is able to explain them at their level. And to be able to do that, that student would have had to uh, have a very solid understanding of whatever that concept is. So how can we use Feynman technique while preparing for the F electrical and computer exam as well as the PE power exam? It's a four step process. Step number one involves you taking a piece of paper and a pen and writing at the top of the paper the name of the concept, the topic, or the knowledge area that you're trying to learn. Step number two involves writing the formal definition of that concept, the actual scientific definition that comes from the textbook along with all the complicated diagrams, the graphs, and the circuits and whatnot. So once you have written that, now you can move on to step number three. In step number three, you are required to translate that complicated definition, which includes a lot of scientific jargon, which includes a lot of terms, into simple to understand explanation with simple words. And step number four is where a lot of thinking and reflection happens. As you're going through step three, when you're trying to come up with simple explanation using simple terms and not using the crutches of complicated definitions, complicated words and terminology, you will find that you will struggle to explain this complicated concept into simple words. But in step number four, you have to persevere. You have to continue uh, working on coming up with a simple explanation of this concept because in the process of doing that, you're going to untangle the complications and the intricacies. And you will be able to come up with maybe a much more landy, but much more effective and easy to understand explanation of the complicated concept. Let us now go through an actual example. We are now going to apply Feynman technique on the definition or the difference between permutation and combination. I'm going to read the formal definition of permutation and combination. So please bear with me. Definition of permutation. A permutation of a set is the arrangement of its members into a sequence or linear order. Or if the set is already ordered, a rearrangement of its elements. Whereas a combination of a set is a selection of some members of a set regardless of the order. I don't know about you, but my first take on this formal definition is that it is not very easy to follow. So let's go through some simplifications. Simplification number one is that a permutation of a set is a selection of its members where different orders mean different permutations. A combination of a set is a selection of its members where different orders still lead to the same combination as long as the same members are present. So this is our simplification number one. So let us take another stab at it. I'm going to go through simplification number two. A permutation is any selection where order matters, whereas a combination is a selection where order does not matter. Now, when you compare this to the original definition, it is far, far easier. It's even easier than the simplification number one that we did. Now, as you keep on applying Feynman technique on complicated concepts and try and distill without losing sight of important things, the idea is to keep all the features of that concept, but be able to explain the concept in simple terms. Earlier on, I mentioned that maybe sometimes when you apply Feynman technique, your two line definition would basically expand into maybe a longer version of itself. But in this case, as you saw, we started with a pretty wordy, lengthy definition but our final simplification, which I'll read again, a permutation is any selection where order matters, whereas a combination is a selection where order does not matter. This is not only simple to understand, but it is also very concise and very brief. Although I didn't know about Feynman technique until relatively recently, but I had always been using it during my undergraduate studies, during my graduate studies, and even during high school. And I consciously apply Feynman technique during the explanations that I provide in my lectures for my F electrical and computer exam preparation course, as well as the PE power exam preparation course. Now, as you know, F electrical and computer exam has its own set of challenges. The fact that it has 17 sections covering entire undergraduate engineering 
And the P-Power exam has its own sets of challenges because it is very focused on power systems engineering, which contains a lot of very complicated concepts. And the level of understanding that is expected is very, very in-depth. So the approach that I take while going through 150 lectures of my FE electrical and computer exam is I ask myself every step, at every step, in every lecture, when I'm preparing those lectures, quizzes, the mini exams, whether I am able to explain the concept simply enough, whether I am relying on the crutches, whether I'm relying on the assistance of complicated terms to explain the concept. If that is the case, then I go back to the drawing board and come up with a much more simpler explanation without compromising on the key features of the concept that is being explained, whether it is Norton's theorem, whether it is a circuit analysis of a BJT, whether it is a bubble sort, insertion sort, um, RSA algorithm. So every single concept, I try and make sure that I distill it down into simple enough explanation that the student can latch on right away and develop that deep level of understanding. And same is true for my PE Power course. There are a lot of very complicated concepts such as symmetrical components, per unit systems, fault analysis. So I use the Feynman technique along with the first principles, which I have mentioned in um, earlier videos, that sometimes you have to go back to the basics in order to explain a complicated concept. And that's why I love to do a lot of derivations in my PE Power exam preparation, because when you go through the derivations, when you see how the entire skyscraper is built from the foundation upwards, it will help you gain that deep level of understanding. So how can you make use of Feynman technique? It's pretty simple and straightforward. You have to zone in on the concepts that are bugging you. And most likely these are going to be the concepts that either you're learning for the first time or concepts that you have previously learned but not fully understood because they were very complicated or because they were not explained to you properly. So take a look at those concepts. First of all, make a list of those concepts because if you don't know what the challenging areas are for you, then you're just gonna float through your exam preparation, assuming that you'll be able to tackle these concepts when they show up on the exam and you would be disappointed. So the time is right now to make sure that you have a tidy list of those concepts and that you're attacking them using first principles, you're trying to make sense out of them using the Feynman technique. Take that complicated concept, break it down into pieces, be able to explain it to yourself and write it out in simple terms or explain it to someone else. And once you've done that, then only you'd be able to tell yourself that now I'm ready to basically tackle this exam because there's no doubt that they are challenging exams for their own reasons and the only way to be fully prepared for them is to have deep level of understanding.